Let me ask you just a few more things since there's still time on here. Um, about Croy, since you were back in the 70s, you um, you knew Johnny High from Croy. Yes, I did. I interviewed Johnny earlier in the summer this year, and uh, we talked a lot about interesting um, things that made radio so much more a community thing back then. And you. Uh, we're with Gibson Ranch. I was park manager at Gibson Ranch County Park. That's where they did events. We put on, uh, for several years, the Croy Picnic. Mm -hmm. And it was a big, uh, between Sacramento County Parks Department and uh, Carol Y. Johnny was my contact person at the studio. And uh, he and I worked, did all the planning, and we got all kinds of stuff donated. and. Just, uh, we had literally thousands of people come out to the park. Uh, it was uh, quite a big deal. We did, did they a, have bands? Uh, we had some bands. We had canned music. Uh, one year, I remember very well, it was just before Easter, and so we had this massive Easter egg hunt. In fact, that may have been the first Freud picnic. Uh, Wonder Rabbit must have been part of that. Wonder <laughs> Rabbit, definitely. Martin Ashley. Uh, Martin and I uh, got to be pretty good friends because he, he had a recording studio yeah. and uh, I used him uh, only a couple of times. I usually used Paradise when I needed studio time. But uh, yeah, uh, was uh, taking Martin for a, a ride through the crowd in a little Shetland pony. Actually, it was a Welch pony. and. Uh, and a little Surrey, and we're running around, and uh, something spooked the horse, and it jumped and got the reins between its legs, and it didn't like that, so it kicked, put me right in the middle of the chest, and uh, that was sort of the end of the day. I was fine, I thought, but you know, the boss made me go to the emergency room. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, over the years, we had some really great times with those guys. Because that was throughout the whole '70s. Uh, I think we did three or four of them. Oh, okay. You know, I have trouble remembering what I had for breakfast. <laughs> if I had breakfast, that's yeah. that's sort of. A, so what what brought you into recording studios like Paradise and, and, and his studio or Martin's? Um, I liked doing uh, stuff. My dad sang semi-professionally, and uh, he had a couple of uh, ladies from Woodland that backed him up and. Uh, they wanted to do a, uh, a recording. It was primarily gospel music, and uh, I knew uh, Kurt Shearer and uh, Craig. Craig, yes. I just did a, did an album with Craig last November. Uh, at, since they were kids, and uh, so I used them a lot. Uh, we recorded my dad's stuff, uh, and then I did. I took a bunch of high school friends of my daughters that had a band, and they wanted. They were really popular uh, at school, and uh, we uh, we took them into the studio to try see if we could put together an album. And they never really clicked in the studio setting. They fed off of their audience, mm, okay. and uh, they'd have been. It had been a much better recording had we had a live audience. But uh, first time in the studio and. The master tape's still sitting around in a closet somewhere. Yeah. Uh, but two of those boys went on to become uh, the alternative group Cake from Sacramento. You wow. know Cake. Yeah, I helped make them popular at Quad. Yeah, so. well, uh, I, I got to record uh, uh, Todd Roper was the drummer and uh, oh, lead guitar. It's hell getting old. Uh, there was Brown? Uh, yeah, yes, Greg Brown. Greg Brown. Greg Brown and Todd Roper. So yeah. uh, they were the beginning, and I recorded them uh, with a couple other kids, and they went on to bigger and better things. But, so I've done some of that. Now I have a, a granddaughter who is uh, quite a vocalist, and uh, last November at age 10, uh, we secretly went into the studio and laid down 12 tracks of uh, both Christmas and just popular music. And uh, that was her Christmas present to her parents, grandparents, friends. And 
even though Grandpa paid for it, it was uh, it was it was uh, a wonderful surprise for everybody. So still like to play with that stuff. I've uh, I've enjoyed media. I owned uh, a multi-image production company for a while called uh, Magic Lantern Productions, and uh, could do. I I think my biggest one was 15 projectors running off of an old Apple IIe computer, mm. wow. uh, and with full stereo and. You know, then the video came in, and nobody does slides. I don't even know if you can buy a 35 millimeter slide <laughs> film anymore. <laughs> but slideshows are gone. They've yeah. been replaced uh, with internet stuff. Yeah, yeah you know, technology yeah. marches on. And nothing wrong with that. It's yeah. just, uh, and I still I use a, a program. And I, I'm a Dyed and Wool Macintosh fan. I am too. And uh, I use a program called uh, Photo Magico. And, uh, oh my goodness, if I could have done with slides what I could do with that thing on the computer. It's, yeah. uh, it's an amazing, crazy world now. Everything's at your fingertips now. Yeah. Some more you had to go through all these different things to make yeah. something good happen. Yes, unfortunately not all of it's good. And yeah. sometimes what's at your fingertips could be at a whole lot of other people's too. Yeah. Not careful, so. It's like so many other things. You have to you have to moderate, and be careful. But uh, there's there's a lot of good out there. Thanks a lot, Gary. Thank you, Alex. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. All right.